come week in, week out to prophesy the downfall of America, which is known in the Bible by many spiritual names, mystery names, right? From mystery Sodom, right to the daughter of Babylon, right? Get this in Revelations 11 and 7 real quick. Hey, and also we come out to tell our people that they are truly the Lord's people, the Lord's chosen people out of the Bible, right? And the Israelites that the Bible speaks of in its present time, our so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans of Negro and Indian descent, as well as those that are scattered across the four corners of the earth. Because as a penalty or an adverse effect of us casting the ways of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai behind our back, hey, we are under spiritual curses right now. Not like those people that subscribe to the religion of Judaism that call themselves Jews and are not, but the real blood seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Right now, they are under spiritual curses, all the curses of Deuteronomy 28. And I mentioned the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. His proper name is Yahweh, <laughs> right? He to be, right? A lot of people call him God, which God simply means powers. But there are many gods. But the God of the Bible, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, his proper name is Yahweh. And who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, his son who was sent here in the form of a man, Right, like it said, he was hung and slew on a tree to give repentance unto Israel. Right, he came in the form of a heavily melanated man of color. Right, and his name is Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. Yah, Yahweh Shai, Yah mean he, Yahweh Shai Savior, Deliverer. Because in Deuteronomy 28 and 68, the prophecy said that no man will buy us and redeem us out of this lower state. Right, and that's the spirit of prophecy it said that in Revelation 19 and 10. Right, with the spirit of prophecy, the spirit of Yahweh Shai, right? Who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. So if he were here today, because he said that he would not meet us as a man, but if he were here, he would be doing exactly what we intend to do today, which is bring out Bible prophecy and tie it into what's going on socially and politically, economically, right? In our household, spiritually, and let our people know who they are according to the Bible in hopes that they repent and that they turn back to the law, statutes, and commandments that were given to them for their good. Right? This is the reason why we're at the bottom of every facet of the society because the God of the Bible, Yahweh, hey, he gave us instructions on how we should maneuver and operate here on the earth. Right? Hey, and double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone that teach them new well that have the 100% sound doctrine, the sound understanding of the Bible, if the Spirit is actually suffering with you and you can receive it, this is everything you need to know to obtain salvation in this time, right? The Most High is so merciful that He didn't remove us and our teachers into the corner anymore. Like it says in Daniel 7, we were asleep for a time, time, and dividing of time, right? But now, Hey, we're standing on our feet in this seeding great army, like it says in Ezekiel 37. And this is all prophetic, right? You can bring up what you got. This is Revelation 11 and 7. God. And when they shall, and, then, and when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that descended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. Hey, bring this out from the top one more time, Bible Kishon. Revelations 11 and 7. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. Go ahead. And their bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Hey, and our Lord was crucified. In this great city, which is Sodom and Egypt, spiritually Sodom and Egypt, right? Because all of the lewd, inordinate, illicit ways that were being observed in Sodom of antiquity, in those five cities that were surrounding Sodom and Gomorrah, Zoar, Zoboam, right? The same lewd behaviors and activities that were going on in ancient Egypt, right? We know about the, the you know, the contentions of Horus and Seth. We know about all of the wicked, inordinate uh, traditions that they had in ancient Egypt, 
right? Those are being observed here. You always see a nigga with an onk on his chest. Right. You know what I'm saying? Or you see someone with a cross on their chest, right? But spiritually, this is Sodom in Egypt. Why? Because all of the things that those places were involved in, this place takes on that same spirit. Right? Bring this out one more time. Revelations 11 and 7. Huh. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them. Hey, like the beast man. You know, scroll 29 verse 6 right. with the, the, you know, the planet of the apes. Right? It said that that beast man, you know, he kills for sport. Right. You know? But this is speaking about NATO and the EU. Right? When you're speaking about the, the whore of Babylon and that beast that that whore is riding. Right? That is symbolizes NATO and the EU. Right? Because the Bible is an actual mystery book. Like it says in the book of Matthew 13 and 10. Right? Bring this out in the book of Matthew uh, 13 real quick. Right? Because a lot of people don't understand the Bible is codified. And it's only given to the elect of one nation of people to receive these prophecies. And it's one thing to receive them, but it's a whole other thing to bend the knee and begin to observe them. To subdue your own understanding and adopt the ways of our forefathers, as the scriptures say, the old path in Jeremiah 6. Right, you can bring what you got. This is Matthew 13 and 10. Go on. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? Why what? Why speakest thou unto them in parables? Go ahead. He answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the kingdom, the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. It is given unto you to know what? The, the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. He, this is with Solomon 2 and 22. he said it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Right? At one point, it was illegal for us to read. Why? Because like I said in the book of Daniel, in the book of Revelation, it was already predestined for the Lord's people to be without the knowledge of their power, Yahweh, and his son, Yahweh Shai, for an, a certain period of time, the bounds were set. Right? This is why Revelations 1 and 3 says, Blessed is he that what? Read it. If they said that in their law, it was illegal for us to read. Because hey, the Most High had totally turned his back on us. Right. But now we are being reunited with our power through the prophets. Right? It said, I will reveal my secrets, my mysteries, unto my servants the prophets. It says this in Amos 3 and 7. Right? You will. As it pertains to the mysteries, you can bring this out, Wisdom of Solomon. Yeah. Wisdom of Solomon 2 and 22. God. As for the mysteries of God, they do them not. Neither hope they for the wages of righteousness, nor discern a reward for blameless souls. Hey, it said, as for the mysteries, the other 17 nations that come out of Adam, because the Israelites are just one nation that's comprised of 12 tribes. Right. But as far as the table of nation, there are 18 nations that came out of Adam. Right, just like it says in Second Edges 56 and 56. As for the other people that come out of Adam, as for the other 17 nations, hey, they were not given these laws, statutes, and commandments. Right? They are not under the law. Sin cannot be imputed on them because sin is transgressing the law. That was only given to this one nation that comprises of 12 people. Right? So that's why Wisdom of Solomon, bring this out one more time. As Wisdom of Mr. Solomon, 2 and 22. Huh. As for the mysteries of God, they knew them not. Neither hope they for the wages of righteousness. Hey, because the scriptures say the wages of sin is death, but sin can only be imputed on to the Israelites. These nations that are round about, that's why I said they don't even look for the wages of observing these laws, statutes, and commandments. They are totally outside of the temple. Like in Ezra 4, they saw us building and the heathen said, hey, we want to build with y'all. But we like, hey, it's not in you. You don't have the capacity to observe these laws, statutes, and commandments. The spirit that dwells within you, right? It's not of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. You're not chosen, right? You can bring this up one more time. Wisdom of Solomon 2 and 22. As for the mysteries of God, they knew them not. They knew them not. Neither hoped they for the wages of righteousness nor discern a reward for blameless souls. Hey, to observe the Lord's statutes, commandments, to not be caught with gal, to be blameless, to the Israelites, 
hey, we understand that's beneficial unto us in our spiritual bank account, not only in this life, but also we know there's a reward because there's a life after this. We understand that our spirit lives forever. And we understand that the earth is nothing more than the seat of judgment. As far as regeneration, reincarnation, we understand that this is a part of the biblical understanding, the mysteries. Right? Reincarnate, re meaning back, incarnation, the flesh. What goes back in the flesh? Your spirit. So we understand that, hey, get this in Matthew 16 and 28 real quick. There'll be some of us standing here that won't taste of death. Right? But to those that actually sleep on this side, the spirit leaves the body, the, the body goes back into the earth. We understand that there, there are men that won't taste of death, but to those that do pass, those that do transition, hey, we understand that it's not the end. That spirit, that energy will take form in another vessel. We said that in Numbers 14 and 18, every third or fourth generation, right? But to stay on topic, you can bring out what you got. This is Matthew 17, not 16, I'm just locked. 16 and 28. Huh. Verily I say unto you. Verily I say unto you. Go ahead. There be some standing here which shall not taste of death. That will not? That will not taste of death. That will what? That will not taste of death. Hey, the scripture said, Verily I say unto you. This is prophecy. It said, There are some of you standing here, even on this earth at this time, that will not taste of death until what? Verily I say unto you, there will there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Right? And we're going to get into the chariots, as the scriptures say, they're going to be amazed by the strangeness of those men's salvation that won't actually experience a physical death on this side, but will rather be transitioned into those spiritual bodies called up to meet him in the air as they sing in church in a cloud as the bible calls it right get this in psalm 147 and 19 right but there'll be some that will not taste of death right and this is why you know in the previous scripture it said that they seek not the reward for the blameless souls right they don't understand the, the heathen and the nations round about they're living for this time Right, this is why Wisdom of Solomon 2, it talks about them using the creatures in our youth. You know, let us leave tokens of ourselves everywhere. Why? Because they like, hey, this is our time to run, and after this, it's going to be finished. Hey, but the Lord's true servants, those that have an understanding of the scriptures, an outstanding understanding of the scriptures, hey, we understand that everyone that is here, they've been here before, <laughs> and they're playing out of judgment. The same way we being in a lower state is playing out of judgment. Oh, but I wasn't here. Oh, yes, you were. Oh, yes, you were. We were talking about Job 4 and 7, any parents being innocent. Nobody's innocent because even that baby that kept that judgment. You know, that goes into John 9 as well. You know, why? Good, good master, why is this man born blind? Who sent him or his parents? To let you know that you can be held accountable for not only the sins of your parents, which are you, but for your sins that you committed the last time. Right. This is why we all need mercy. This is why the Most High being long-suffering with his elect is necessary for us to obtain salvation. I got a quick precept to back the brother up. God. Uh, this is Revelation 11, uh, 22 and 11. God. It says, he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. Uh -huh. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. Uh -huh. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. Mm. So like the brother was saying, you are what you are. The Lord made you and gave you a certain spirit from the foundation of the earth. You got to stand in that okay? lot. You stand in your lot each time you come back into your body. You do the same. That's you got right. the same spirit over and over and over. You to do the same thing, stand in your lot. Hey, that, that's right. Hey, get this in 1 Corinthians 14 and 38 real quick. This is why the Bible gives us loopholes, right? Because it's not of him that will it, but him that run it. The Most High actually rejects, right? That's why I said, hey, he that is unjust, let that nigga be unjust still. still, right? We are not a community organization. We come out for the hopeful elect. Lord right. willing, we are among those men, right? right? You can bring what you got. 
This is 1 Corinthians 14 and 38. Go. But if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. Let him what? Let him be ignorant. And he said, he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. Right. If this man, he said, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. To lack knowledge, like Hosea 4 and 6 says, is to be ignorant. ignorant. If they want to be in pride, if they don't want to subdue their own understanding, right. if they don't want to bend the knee, right. like the brother brought out in Revelation 22 and 11, let him be unjust still, let him be wicked still. What does it say right here, 1 Corinthians 14, 38? 1 Corinthians 14 and 38. Huh. But if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. Uh -huh. Wherefore, brethren, covet to pro prophesy and forbid not to speak with tongues. Hey, get this in Matthew 7 and 6. Right? It said covet to prophesy. Right? The spirit of prophecy, Revelation 19 and 10. We touched on that earlier. That's the spirit of Yahweh Shah. Right? Among Israelite men, a prophet is the greatest. This is who kings and dignitary and nobility will go to to get advice and get counsel. Right. Why? Because they understand that these men have a spiritual inclination with the heavenly father. Seers, <laughs> right? Because right. the word prophet simply means to say before. Right. And, and I was going to say, like, it, it, I, it, it's so ingrained in our spirit to seek prophets that Saul actually uh, sought out a dead prophet right. just to get advice from him. Right. Because the Lord wasn't dealing with him at one point, and and he was so desperate to find out what his uh, uh what to do, right? He sought out uh, Samuel uh, after he was passed. That's right. After his death. Right. Right. Look at Bell in the dragon. Right. You know what I'm saying? Daniel. He was known in the Babylonian Empire for doing what? Breaking down visions and dreams that certain kings were having in that time. Joseph. Joseph. Yeah. He actually delivered the Egyptians from famine. Right. You know, after he was sold in slavery. Right. right. But this is a man that was instrumental on actually sustaining that society in that time. Right? When you're dealing with um, Daniel and Nebuchadnezzar, you know, Daniel's the, the seventh chapter. Brothers always talking about Daniel's um, when he's talking about the different empires from the Babylonian to the Persian media to the Greek, right? Those dreams were actually broken down by Israelite men, Israelite prophets in that time. So this is why the scriptures say covet to prophesy. Because in a society, hey, there's none of a greater vocation than being a prophet, being the one that is the most high chosen. If that's his will to bring light to your people through his word. Through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shimei, I was shot. Right. Save your people from a imminent destruction. Because that's what a prophet does to those that hear and those that hearken. Right. right? The Most High always comes and he delivers. That's what we're doing in this time. Like it says in Ezekiel 2. Right? Whether they hear or whether they forbear. Right? right? You can bring out um, what you got, Matthew 7. This is Matthew 7. Matthew 7 and 6. Give not which is holy unto those. Hey, he that is unjust, he that is ignorant. The scripture said, give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Right. Right. This is a heathen roundabout as well as two thirds of our people. Right. right? Their conscience has been seared with a hot iron. Right. They are brute beasts. Right. They are without the knowledge of the, the Bible. So they're operating on pure carnal lust and instinct, on, on feelings, right. emotions. Right. So they're going to err. They're not, it said the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom right. in Proverbs 4 and 7. They're not operating with wisdom because right. wisdom is applying scriptures. Right. You can have knowledge, but wisdom is to know how to apply that knowledge and let it benefit you. Right. And we understand that in this time, us observing these laws, statutes, and commandments is actually making us prosperous, making our way straight. Not to say we're here to prosper, because right. we're not. Right. Micah 2 and 10 says this is not our rest. But to have our daily bread, right. have our needs met, right. hey, that comes along with being obedient. Right. And hey, the, the sun shines on the just and the unjust. These wicked niggas, the most high God, they stomach full of food too. Right. The, 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 the prospering that's taking place though is the prospering of our spirit you know what I'm saying not so much you know because even if your your your, your spirit prospers 
it's going to show up some kind of way in the physical. That's right. You know? So, you can't say we're prospering, but more so during the, in the spirit, spiritual things. Right. Because this flesh is corrupt. Anything that we gain on this side as far as material, right. it's going to rot away. Burn it's going to burn up in this yeah. place. Like it says in the book of um, Malachi 4, it says, right. it, the day shall come that will burn is enough. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and everything is going to be clean dissolved. So we, according to uh, uh, Peter, the elements are going to melt. So that means if the elements melt, that, that means everything is going to melt. With fervent heat. Fervent heat, that's right. That's right. So this is why we don't feed into our flesh. Although we are in the flesh, we understand that, hey, the flesh is a direct opposition. Uh, it's like an op. <laughs> the flesh is an op to your spirit. Oh, like Paul said, the, the flesh war against the spirit. Hey, get that if you can. Right. Mama, Mama Pasha, because hey, you know, the, the spirit of the message is, is moving. Really? Right? This is why the book, get this in Jude 1 and 6, and I'll find this, and um, I'll find that. Uh, it's in the book of Corinthians. Right? Jude 1 and 6 called this change of darkness. It said, the angels that have lost their first estate have been cast down to everlasting change of darkness until the most high redeem us out of this little estate. Right? And that's what this is, change the darkness. The angels that have left their first estate, hey man, we were we were little G gods. Right. The most high gave us dominion over this physical earth. Right? We were, I mean, can you imagine how far we've fallen? Just like the fruits, the vegetables, the earth is languishing. You know, it took two men at one point to carry a cluster of grapes. So just imagine how far we've fallen through our sin and through our iniquity. Being the angels, which is the best that is lost their first estate. Let me bring this out while they This is Jude uh, one, one and six. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he have reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Hey, unto the judgment of the great day. The angels, the messengers, that have lost, they left their first estate, which is what? Rulers of this galaxy, rulers of this physical era. Right. Job 9 and 24 lets us know the earth has been given into the hand of the wicked. But before it was given into the hand of the wicked, for our transgressions from Genesis to Revelation, right in Genesis, it lets you know that when God created this earth, he gave Adam, the Adamites, dominion over the earth, right. over the animals, and over the nations that were round about. But for us transgression, the Most High's laws, separating from the knowledge of our power, exalting the ways of the heathens that are round about, esteeming them. Hey, now look at us, right? Jake got a march for equal rights. He got to beg your enemy, you know, for a lighter affliction, like in, like in ancient Egypt, the Most High hardened Pharaoh's heart, right? Because the Most High like. In Isaiah 19, most I like you going down to Egypt for help, but you're not looking to the Holy One of Israel. So, hey, you're going to trust in the shadow of Egypt, and that's going to be your demise. You know, similar now with, they got all type of adverse reactions from these vaccines. Right? You know, AIDS is acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. But now they got something called VAIDS. Right? They got something called VAIDS, V-A-I-D-S, where they call it vaccine-acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. Where in the same way in the 80s, they called it a gay man's disease, wherein their physical health would deteriorate rapidly, right? But it'll take time. The same thing is happening now. They're saying the same reaction that people's bodies had to HIV, AIDS, they're saying that these vaccines are giving the same reaction. They call it BAIDS, B-A-I-D-S, right? Vaccine acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. Why? Because a lot of people, when the world, I'm sorry, let me use acronyms. When the WHO, uh, you know, started putting out mandates, and start putting out information. Guess what? The Lord's service was out here. We were taking strikes on our pages, you know, being blackballed, telling the truth. suffering for doing what? Giving y'all warning. 
telling y'all that, hey, this is something that's going to be adverse right. to your health. Yep. Esau won't give you anything free that's going to be a benefit. Especially not if he tell you, you did it first. Right. <laughs> when have we ever gotten anything first besides death? And exactly. And then he was using bait like donuts, fried, fried. chicken, weed. <laughs> I mean, he was using all of the bait to try to get Jake to go down this slippery slope. That, like tell, the right that tells you he's been studying you and he know exactly your tendencies. Right. Right. But they trust in the shadow of Egypt. Right. And it's to their demise. Right? Here it is. Esau um, was giving all type of perks and unearned benefits. Just for you to take something that he says is going to benefit you. And we were bringing up Tuskegee. Right, Kiss me, Kia Cordell, who was the lead scientist over that whole accelerated process of making a vaccine. We were telling people it takes years, three to four years to find a verified vaccine. But these people, you know, like sheep being led to the slaughter, they totally cast the words of the Most High men behind their back to their demise. And just to touch on what the brother was saying, the WHO now has issued another emergency for that impact. See that? You know? Hey. So they, they have more plans for y'all to take more inoculations right. in the near future. Right. Right. Um, and it's going to also be around the presidential campaign, right? They're going to put something out and they're going to, you know, like the Hegelian dialectic, problem, reaction, solution, right? Right? They call it synthesis, synthesis antithesis, thesis. They'll create a problem and they already have a predestined solution. Just like AstraZeneca, Johnson & Johnson, Pfizer, they already have people that are investing in these companies. Right. Knowing, just like the brother said, that they're going to come with another round of mandates. Right. Here in Georgia, just last week, they re-enlisted the mask mandates. Right. When you go into a building or a store, you have to social distance. And just like he said, these monkeypox, right? right? Uh, initially, what they call acquired immunodeficiency syndrome AIDS, was known as a gay man's disease. Right. Out in San Francisco, you would see it just among that homosexual population. Right. Now, the Most High, get this in Deuteronomy 28 and uh, 58. Now, the Most High, he's unleashing unknown plagues, right? Newly created diseases in the earth because sin and wickedness is here. The Most High is going to continue to bring out plagues. And I'm going to bring that out in 2nd Edward 16, right? The Most High is going to continue to smack this place with all the plagues of Egypt. Until it is destroyed. Babylon, they can take bomb, but this place is not healed. It cannot be healed. The writing is on the wall. And just like we're going into Deuteronomy 28 and 58, speaking on these diseases that men have never heard of. One being smallpox. I'm sorry, the monkeypox. Here it is, you know, these zoonotic diseases. They said that the big 19, let me use wisdom. They said that it started from bat soup in Wuhan, China. And now you have this disease that's prevalent among the LGBT community. They're saying a lot of these monkeypox vaccinations are not even available because the demand is so high. And they're saying that the homosexual black men in that community or that death style that they're observing, they said that they can't even get their hands on it. Why? Because when a white man catches a cold, Jake, you're going to catch pneumonia. You know what I'm saying? When a white man get hit with these diseases, they have the means. Right? They have the wealth. Like it says in Psalm 73, they're not in trouble like most men. Right? So they'll have the positions, the means, the money, they, even if they got to travel. You know what I'm saying? Jake, they'll travel to go get a Brazilian butt lift. But when it comes down to them getting medical treatment and things of that nature, no, that's not on a high list of a priority with our people. But when it comes down to these other nations, right, look who's running around, who's taking vitamins at GNC, men's health. The so-called white man, right? He can go to Whole Foods and he can get the best food, 
if there's a you know uh ailment or a disease he has even if he ends up dying he could get the best treatment the best care right. similar with these monkey pops right so let the scriptures come out you know what i'm saying just so we could tie in what's going on socially with the biblical prophecy God. this is deuteronomy 28 and 58 God. if thou wilt not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book that thou mayest fear the, this glorious and fearful name the Lord thy power, then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful. Hey, bring this out one more time from the top, Bible Kashan. Deuteronomy 28 and 58. Huh. If thou will not observe to do all the words of this book. Hey, the scripture said, if thou, this is the Lord's people, if thou will not observe to do all the words that's in this book, because the words in this book is pertaining to the children of Israel. This is their commandments, laws, and statutes on how they should eat. How they should worship, how they should work, uh, uh, resolve civil issues, and how we should sacrifice. Right. right? But it said, This is the book of the law. Bring this out one more time, Bible Shabbat. Deuteronomy 28 and 58. If thou wilt not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy power, then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful. It will what? Make thy plagues wonderful. Hey, he said, I'll make your plagues wonderful. That word wonderful is a compound word as I always bring out. Full of wonder. Because these doctors, these physicians, they look upon these bumps around this guy's mouth and his anus. And they said, i never seen no shit like this before in my life. We've seen gonorrhea. We've seen syphilis. We've seen herpes, the claps. But what the fuck is this? we never seen nothing in a indigo hue <laughs> you know what i'm saying we've never seen it with the silver tint but he said i will make your place wonderful right the different diseases that these people acquire from being inordinate because in the bible in the book of leviticus the 20th chapter it said that man shall not lie with man right it's an abomination right to go after forbidden flesh doing that which is unseen. The Bible calls it an abomination, an act that the Most High hates. Right? And as part of our constitution, our law, statutes, and commandments is there shall be no whore of the daughters of Zion, no dykes, no lesbians, and among the men, no pansexuals, no bisexuals, no homosexuals, no sodomites of the sons of Israel, general commanding Yohanan. Right? Because the scripture said, I know not the way of, it said in Proverbs 18, right? As it pertains to a man and his maid. He says, I know not the way of an eagle in the air, a snake on a rock, a ship in the ocean, or a way of a man with his maid. Yeah. So you can do what you want with your woman as it pertains to the law. Right. Keep it lawful. You know what I mean? And he's saying if she got an orifice, you know, doing the butt, they make light of it. When those acts are actually perverted, yeah. the women of our nation, and the men of our nation. The penis actually absorbs, right? It not only ejaculates, but it absorbs fluids and things of that nature, right? This is why sodomy is forbidden in the scriptures, right? But this is why our people are being hit with all of these new diseases, right? All of these unknown diseases, monkeypox. We didn't even hear about monkeypox two years ago. But now the homosexuals in spiritual Sodom and Gomorrah, Atlanta, Hey, this is in their vernacular now. You know, monkeypox vaccines and things of that nature. Right? You can bring this up one time. Deuteronomy 28 and 58. If thou wilt not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy power, then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful. Okay, then make thy, ways, thy plagues wonderful. Go ahead. And the plagues of thy seed even great plagues and of long continuance of what of long continuance and sore sicknesses and of long continuance hey of long continuances and sore sickness all the plagues of egypt are going to hit spiritual sodom in egypt babylon right this is how babylon is going to be brought through different various judgments one of them being the most high unleashing plagues sicknesses illnesses on this place 
right? You want to go and munch on another woman's coochie? You want to censor? You know, these are things that happen in this society. The Most High is going to start bringing forth that judgment. He's not slack. Right? Go ahead. Moreover, then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful in the plagues of thy seed, even great plagues and of long continuance, and sore sicknesses and of long continuance. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt, which thou wast afraid of, and they shall cleave unto thee. Also, every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book hey, of this law. Hey, because monkeypox ain't in there, right? You have different plays like moraine that hit those cows in ancient right. Egypt. Right. You know what I'm saying? You had the first born, right? right. You had frogs, locusts eating up the vegetation. Wow. Right, so locusts coming back to the family. Right, all these plays, all the plays of Egypt. All right, what was it, eight or 10 plays that hit Egypt? Right, that brought Egypt down because the Pharaoh, the Most High, hardened his heart, right. so that he would add affliction to the Israelites' burdens until all them judgments start coming on his ass, right. and then he let them go. Right, and this is just like what's going to happen. But this society is not going to let us go. They're going to come crouching, right, when this society begins to be hit with famine, and there are certain men that are being sustained. Right. Then the people will know that a prophet has been among them. They're gonna know that the words that we speak were not just loose, casual bullshit. Right. You're gonna know that, hey, we're not up here to debate with you. Right. Just like you were saying, he that is unjust, he that is ignorant, cast not your pearls, why? Because we're here for y'all benefit. But one thing the Most High does, he gonna resist a proud nigga. Because if your cup is full, what can I give you? But for you to know that you lack, for you to know that you're wanting, Hey, that's a broken and contrite spirit. That's even the most I can deal with somebody like that. Because they're coming for ashes. They're not coming to be heard. They're not coming to tell what they know. But they're coming to receive a word. Hey, and the most I actually has this man out here to do just that. Serve you all by giving you warning on what you should do to obtain salvation. Right? Uh, you can create this out one more time. Deuteronomy 28 and 58. If thou wilt not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear the glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy power, then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful. Make your plagues wonderful. And the plagues of thy seed, even great plagues, and of long continuance, and sore sicknesses, and of long continuance. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the all the diseases of Israel, uh, all, the all the diseases of Egypt. Like, uh, hey, and this is why it says these plagues will be unto you and unto your children. The blessings of the Father establish the household. Why I said Israel. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, and and this is why the scripture says the blessings of the Father establish the household. Okay. Here it is. A lot of these children they're under curse. You know why? Because their parents are out of order. Right. Here it is. This child might be hit with polio. A lot of these archaic, ancient diseases, they're coming back. They're saying that polio was found somewhere in the earth. And this is something that you haven't heard of. The black plague. You know what I'm saying? Diseases from animals. Right? Not only is Esau in the laboratory, you know, constantly whipping up. You know, it says that um, it, that's the man of perdition. Right? That's the beast man written up in 2 Thessalonians 2 and 3. He's constantly trying to find ways to reduce the global population. Right? So, it's, it, and them, guess who's actually controlling the minds of these scientists? Like it says in Job 12 and 16, the deceived and the deceiver are his. Right? It said that he doesn't go to bed. Right? Unless he's thinking about how he could put us in a deeper rut, in a deeper deficit with our power. Right? So this is to let you know, you know, that man of perdition is being revealed in this time. Right. That beast man. Right? You can uh, continue on with that. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt, uh -huh. which thou wast afraid of, and, shall, and they shall cleave unto thee. 
Also, every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law, then will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. Until what? Until thou be destroyed. Hey, this is a prophecy. These plagues are coming as a result of wickedness. And our people totally, you know, disregarding the law, statutes, and commandments that were given to them. Like if it's in second of April 16, you can start with one and then we'll work down to uh, 14. You know, to touch on the plates. Hey, because a lot of people, they've been deceived into thinking that God is coming to send peace on earth. But rather, he's coming to bring that sword. Right? He's coming to bring destruction. And this is the adverse effect of our people being wicked. Like it says in Zechariah 13 and 8, two-thirds shall be cut off and die. And the Most High said, hey, to the famine, the famine, the sword, the sword, he has a plethora of ways. Like it says in Amos 5, you know, as if a man did flee from a lion. Because a lot of people in their mind, because they took that vaccine, A lot of people in their mind that they taken, you know, one of these different inoculations and they haven't felt any adverse side effects, they've gotten even more stiff necked. You know, well, I took one round, I took the backup, I took the booster, and guess what? I didn't feel any adverse effects. My arm isn't sore. So they hard is being harder. They're becoming more transgressive, more filled with pomp and pride. Right? Because they don't understand that, hey, just because you avoided this life, don't mean that that bear ain't gonna get you. Right. right, get this real quick in Amos 5 and 18, and then we'll jump back to 2 and 16. Right, the day of the Lord. When that judgment come on you, hey, even if you elude one judgment, don't think that you haven't gotten away with it, unrepentant. Right, right you can bring what you got. Amos 5 and 18, come. Woe unto them, Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. Uh -huh. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. As if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him. Hey, I took that. It ain't going to hurt me. All right, you fled from a lion. But guess what's coming down the road? They come with different forms of mandates. Right. Newly created ways of getting you out of here. Things that will, uh, you know, Bring your immunodeficiency. Right. Make it deficient. Your immune system is gonna be more deficient when you take these different things. So right 12 and 10, never trust your enemy. Right. You were sold to your enemies to tell you that in Deuteronomy 28 and 68. Right. But a lot of our people, this mystery eludes them. So they're gonna suffer here in this place. Right, you can bring this out one more time. Okay. Amos 5 and 18. Huh. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light, as if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him, or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall, Lean on the wall. and a serpent bit him. Hey, just imagine you escape a bear, you escape a lion, just to get in the house uh, and a serpent, serpent bite you on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> it said, woe to you that desire the day of the Lord. Right? This is why we come out to give our people warning, because we don't want you to get one of these various forms of judgment, right? And they say the wicked understand that judgment, right? We understand who's the author and finisher of everything that happens down here, right? Before you jump to 2nd Ezra 16, go to 1st Ezra 46 real quick. We know who's responsible for these judgments that play out in the earth, right? This is why I said he reveals his secrets to his servants or prophets. When that baby is crawling down the street and get ran over by that Mack truck, was that baby innocent? Did the devil do it? We're going to get into that right now, right? Because the wicked, they don't understand these judgments when they play out. So they cry for Pookie and Ray Ray when they lie in the casket. Right. And they say they were good men when we understand these were some wicked gang-banging ass niggas. Right. Neighborhood terrorists. Right. And the Most High brought judgment on their motherfucking ass. Right. But to those that don't understand the judgments of the Bible, the lamentations, mourning, and woe written in there, they think that God ain't a man of war. It said right. in Exodus 15 and 3. Right? We well, want to deal with a warrior in any type of way. And we are warrior class people. Right? It said that our planet be a noble branch in Jeremiah 2. So with us being no nobility, 
right? This is why the Most High gave us his law. This would make us know. But the God that we serve, he controls both sides of the spectrum. Like it says in Proverbs 11, a false balance is an abomination. He controls good, and the Bible is about to get into the other side, the left-hand side as we know in the truth, that he controls as well. And he has spirits that are created to bring forth that left-handed judgment. So Rock 39 and 28, just like the baby, you know, has been making news, the monkey that threw the baby off the roof. Here he is, they see the monkey coming and the goddamn sand nigger gonna drop the baby. The monkey said, hey, we got his ass now. And threw him off the building. <laughs> to his death. There's spirits that are created for vengeance. Here in Florida, you had a white woman, an Edomite, playing golf. Falls in the water, get ate up by two alligators. The guy's caught. Right, but that just lets you know that we understand justice. And we understand that those animals, hey, those, he said I created the evil for the, the wicked for the day of evil. All of these calamities that's rolling out, we understand who the most high sword is. As it pertains to Romans 13, Genesis 27, it's Esau Edom. So when these people start trying to take matters into their own hands, and they don't trust in the Holy One of Israel, when they get judged, hey, the wicked understand not judgment, but the Lord's servants, hey, you can bring this out, 1 Samuel 2 and 6. Right. 1 Samuel 2 and 6. Huh. The Lord killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and lifteth up. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lift up, lifteth up the beggar from the Dunhill. Hey, bring this out from the top one more time. So that's balance. The false balance is an abomination. You say it ain't. Hey, the Lord is responsible for good and he's responsible for evil. Bring this out one more time. First Samuel 2 and 6. Because they say the devil did it. So people are inclined to fear the devil. When the fear, you don't know, fear the Lord because you think he's all love. Yeah. That's what they teach in the church, yeah. right? They teach slackness. You don't got to fear the Lord. You can eat pork. Yeah. Niggas in there smoking cigarettes, committing yeah. adultery. Yeah. They There's don't. The Say that again. Right. It's all within its own meaning. That's right. Don't fear man. Fear him that can kill the soul as well as the body. That's right. Yeah. Because it said that in the scriptures, God hasn't given us a spirit of fear. But what we fear is the most high God. That's right. Because he can take the spirit out of your body like the brother I know was just saying. Right? Bring this out one more time. First Samuel 2 and 6. First Samuel 2 and 6. <laughs> the Lord killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bring him up. I get this in Sirach 11 and 7. Right? So he bring him down from the grave. He bring it up. Salvation is in his hand. But he controls both sides of the spectrum. Both good and evil. The angel is an employee that's always been on time. <laughs> that never complained. He's a spirit that was created to bring out judgments on the left hand side. There are spirits that are created for vengeance. But just like their spirits created to save on the right hand side. You know, a lot of people been in those situations where they feel like I could have lost my life. Say again? Count the yeah, and the scriptures say we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Yeah. So a spiritual warfare going around us right now. Yeah. But to the Lord's service, they have angels encamped around them in the spirit. Yeah. So we're not only never alone, but we are always being defended. Right. Yeah. Beyond what we see, beyond what's above our strength, what's beyond what's above our control. Right? We're human beings in the spiritual realm. Yep. But everything that happens in the physical, it begins in the spiritual. There you go, sister. Uh, Sirach 11 and 14. Oh, 14. Uh, prosperity and adversity, life and death, poverty and riches come of the Lord. Ain't the water, brother. You sure. <laughs> brother, you sure. I totally misquoted the, the precept, but the brother knew exactly where to go just based upon the spirit. Right? We're dealing with balance right now. You can bring this out to Rock 11 and 14, the water, bro. Uh, you have to pray for knowledge to understand scripture. That's right. That's right. And when you ask, you receive. But for you not to ask, you must think that you can figure it out on your own. 
Yeah, to ask, that's a form of respect as well. Like if, if, yeah, just like if you have something in your home that belongs to you. A gallon of orange juice. If somebody asks, can I have some of your orange juice, that's showing respect as well. Rather than a nigga just going in the refrigerator. <laughs> right, so just like this is, this is ours, but it belongs to the most high and his elect. So to understand it, you have to be humble. What are you saying and not, and, and be of a broken and contrite spirit as the scripture says. You know, 2nd Edges 14 and 34 says, if thou will subdue your own understanding. Right. No, okay, she on real camera. Hey, the sister said it's nothing that we could do in this physical earth that will impress. Uh, that's why I say boast not in thy works. It's nothing you can do. We had a deficit. Here it is. We we've been five hundred, a thousand years. We've been fucking up. Yep. Now and we've been here before. Yep. Now you come back and you think you're doing something that's impressive, right? That's why that that spirit of um boasting and pride. It's not of the most high because pride is not made for men. Right. Why is earth and ashes proud? But this is Isaiah 4 huh? and something God did not put the spirit, the spirit of fear in us, but the sound mind. Yeah, Isaiah 4 is talking about seven women taking the Holy Spirit. Right. 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 But it's just a place. Right. And I'm going I'm to bring that spirit of fear precept out. We're just going to deal with judgment real quick. You can bring right. that one with us. Kind of. 11 and 14. Uh, prosperity and adversity, life and death, poverty and riches come of the Lord. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the law are of the Lord. Love and the way of good works are from Him. Yeah. Right, we'll bring this out one more time because we're dealing with balance. Once again, bring this out. Uh, uh, Sirach 11 and 14. Prosperity and adversity. Prosperity, when you up. Adversity when you down. Go ahead. Life and death. Poverty and riches. Hey, come people, up with the Lord. People that are in extreme poverty. People that have extreme wealth. It all comes of the Lord. He controls both sides. Now the mind of the Lord's people are what? 23rd Psalm. Give us this day our daily bread. We're not going to want to be extremely rich. No, give me what's convenient for me. Yeah. Which is what? Food, clothing, shelter. And, and, and your black ass don't deserve that. Yeah. Even yeah. if you are able to sleep on the land, if you have a sound mind right. and the ability to use your limbs, right. right? You're doing way better than a lot of people. But the Lord's people, even if you get your legs cut off, you're always going to look at that glass half full. Right. Because we never forget what he's already done. Right. right. You don't forget about it, but if you have two people in life. You have a protagonist and an antagonist. A protagonist is going to look at the cup half full. An antagonist is going to look at the cup half empty. Yeah. No matter what, it's filled halfway, but it's a matter of perspective. Yeah. You can look at what you do have, which is a cup half full. Or look what you don't have, which is a cup yeah. half empty. Yeah. The so-called white man, get this in Proverbs 10 31. The so-called white man wants us to look at what we don't have. And envy all of the things that he does have. Right? If you watch television, if you're out here in the streets, who has the car? Who has the businesses? Who has the material possessions? Right, so the so-called white man, he doesn't believe in the Heavenly Father. Right, he doesn't have faith. So he's not ungrateful. He's ungrateful bastard, he think he's God. He sits in the simple as God. He puts laws on us like he's God. He's trying to number the people. Right, why? Because he doesn't have faith. Right, because that's what it was. That's what it boils back down to because we serve a God that you cannot see. This is why the heathen make idols, something they could put on the shelf, something they could burn incense in front of, right? But we serve a God that you can't see, that you have to have faith to actually please him. Because faith is a substance. Hey, and just like you said, faith without works is dead. And, 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 hey, matter of fact, bring this out real quick, then bring this out in Romans 12. Proverbs. Right. We're we, we gonna get on why yeah. being satisfied. 
with having our cup half empty. Because that's an adverse effect of us transgressing the most high's law, statutes, and commandments. We at the bottom of every facet of society. Yep. We are the rejected. We are the have nots. Yep. And guess what? The so-called white man uses that against our people. By, by, them, by putting his material wealth in their face. Because some of them think that if you don't have money, then your life is in vain. If you don't have money, your life is in vain. Hey, a rapper named... Hey, a hey, rapper... That's right. The whole duty of man, Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. But a rapper named Jeezy said... I'd rather be dead than broke. You know, so, so he's saying, rather than be at the bottom and rely on the Heavenly Father for just a minimum, full clothes and shelter, he said, rather than be broke, he'd rather be dead. Well, is he talking about tangible things or intangible? He's talking about having the wealth beyond his daily bread. Wow. Money, cars, and clothes, holes, all of that oh, stuff. You know what the rappers boast about when they use it? Get rich or die trying. Get rich or die trying. Right? You can bring this out in Proverbs 3 and 31. <laughs> Proverbs 3 and 31. That's why the Bible tells us this. Envy thou not the oppressor. Envy what? Envy not thou the oppressor. Go ahead. And choose none of his ways. Here it is. You choosing his ways. You envying him when everything that he's acquired is through theft, rape, robbery, castrations. Right? It's nothing that he's gotten through hard work, dedication, and ingenuity. Enslaving one people is how he acquired his wealth, and then genocide on a whole nother nation, a uh, whole nother tribe of people. But he hasn't gotten this stuff through decent, being decent and honest. He got it through treachery, terrorism, as the people call it, filthy lucre. Money and wages that are earned by inordinate ways. Right? Killing. You're a contract killer. That's how you make your money. Shaking your ass on a pole, being a whore, that's how you make your money. Being a damn witch. Being a damn witch, selling crack and drugs to your people, that's how you make your money, right? The Bible calls it filthy lucre. This is why you don't envy your oppressor, because they are in a position that the Most High put them in. It said in Genesis 27 and 38, the fatness of the land shall be your dwelling. And you will, you will rule with the sword. So that fatness of the land, that's your Epstein Island. Here it is, niggas is, we're both about flying, flying first class. When Esau got helicopters, private, clear, you know, clear ports, private islands. This is why the Bible tells us the, the Most High knew the conditions that we would be living in. The, the Most High said, I said, I'm well above y'all, as well as the nations. So when you don't see these material possessions, unless it's in my will for you to receive it, hey, you need to desire the bare minimum. Give us this day our daily bread, food, clothes, shelter, and we don't deserve that. But he's saying he's gonna move us to jealousy. Ooh, and just like we moved him to jealousy. Hey, get that in our Deuteronomy 32 and 21 real quick. I will provoke you to jealousy with them that are not our people, right? And this is why our people jealous and envy. You know, that green-eyed devil. You know, this is why Jake don't wanna work a job right. and live earnestly. Right. You know, live a very um, simple life. Jake want to have immediate Lavish. gratification. That microwave shit. Lavish. Jake, he want to see somebody in a Hellcat. He hit an engine. Now, you can Google how much it'll cost to obtain it, and you can work towards it, but Jake said, nah, I ain't trying to put in five years. You know, look, working at this job, $12 an hour, if I save up it, It'll take 15 years. So Jake get impatient. And what did he do? Jump out that window. And, and, or, or worse, end up getting locked up. Getting put in the grave. You watch the first episode of the first 48, nigga trying to hit licks. For what? To obtain material substance. Here it is, your stinking ass had a place to stay. Even if it's with your mama. You had, she had food in the refrigerator, nigga. She, she was at peace with you. All you had to do was plan, pray. That's what they don't do. Right. It said they look not to the Holy One of Israel right. in Isaiah 19. Right? Because if you don't know your nationality,